Yes, I can okay. see you. Bienvenue. Alors, je vais yeah. commencer avec une introduction. Pour I'm vous. going to start with a presentation. Lisa is uh, uh, in services in workplace so that has uh, uh, legal jurisdictions on industrial relations and work uh, regulations. With 23 years of service, Lisa uh, became mediator under industrial relations. During that time, she was named to help clients in various conflict situations. She has also prepared sessions to improve uh, relations in private and public sessions. With more than 15 years experience with human resources and uh, work relations, she has great experiences in traditional mediation. As well as an alternative resolution mechanism. So she has a bachelor's from the University of Moncton and has a, a certificate in human relations or so industrial relations from Queen's University. And she has also had training as a national mediator from the Canadian Association of uh, labor relations uh, jurisdictions. Uh, and she is also a member of the Atlantic Institute uh, on the um, judicial regulations. Welcome. I'm going to share my screen. I have a small problem. I'm going to try to share my work and my uh, screen. I have two screens. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your presentation, but. Uh, we can see your notes. I understand. I have two screens. I'm going to close one of them. Technical problems. There. Perfect. Yes. Hello, everyone, for the welcome and thank you for inviting me. I'm glad to be here and I have listened to certain presentations and it's very useful. Lots of good information is very, very good. I'm going to talk about the services and training possibilities and I'm going to speak of our mandate and then I chose a subject that we offer and we'll talk about a uh, resolution of problems. So as it has been said, it's we are part of the uh, labor services. We have two uh, sections. We have industrial relations and labor relations. We have a, a, a section that deals with union work spaces. And also, she's speaking extremely fast. Uh, we offer a service uh, a neutral party, a third party. All our services respect to the law on industrial relations and uh, we have a series of uh, workshops and other resources based on collective agreements on workspaces. When we speak about work relations, we look at services that are equal for employers and employees in non-unionized workplaces. We promote and we check all the requests on the work 
relations, uh, the minimum requirements, like minimum wages, overtime hours, uh, I will get into details. Uh, we have uh, regional offices uh, to offer services either in person or by telephone, Edmonton, Fredericton, Zieppe, and St. John. St. John. For, for the two, our, regardless of the questions that you have or whether you come in person, all the advice that, that we offer is free, and but we do not offer legal advice. And all services that we give you regarding the law, what applies and what doesn't, it is confidential information. So on the industrial relations, Steve, just a little, <laughs> just a little bit. Sorry, so sorry. I tend to speak fast. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes we forget, right? Yeah. If, uh, if that's okay with you, and I'm sorry to interrupt the floor. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I apologize. I'm sorry. I, I just do breathe to... once in a while. <laughs> so, for industrial relations, our services are conform conform to laws conciliation mediation and naming an arbitrator if it's in a unionized workspace so we also have uh, uh, voluntary services uh, what is in black uh, is uh, in a union environment uh, what is in blue can also be offered to anyone because uh, these are skills that are useful in a workforce, having as a goal to improve work relations in, in the workspace. So uh, communication, uh, competent uh, abilities in the workforce. So today we're going to talk about uh, This can be done for uh, one person, an individual, or a group. And we also can intervene in a workspace, for example, mediation. This is offered to uh, without costs to the interveners. So, for the work relations, work. Who is covered by the law? It went ahead by itself. So the rules, most employers and employees non-unionized are subject to the laws. So certain groups are exempt. For example, work at home. We often ask about work uh, in a private home, depending on many things. These are exempt from the law. Independent workers, certain farm workers, and people who are under federal jurisdiction, like banks, uh, railways, etc. If you're not sure uh, if you are subject to the laws or not, let us ask us and we will tell you. So it depends on the definition of a, an employer or employee if we decide whether we are subject or not. Uh, we have a process that if you want to make a complaint, uh, if you think that the law has not been respected as an employer and employee, you can make a, uh, a complaint. Uh, there's a inquest and then we say whether it is founded or not. You can look at our website if you want more details. As well on uh, rules, so there are information sessions in both languages, French, English, everywhere in the province. And they are adapted to the demand. It could be for a person, a group, it could be done virtually. The subjects that we can cover uh, this is an example of how people are paid, payrolls, uh, uh, minimum wages, overtime, how it's applied, uh, uh, holidays, uh, statutory holidays, annual leave, uh, uh, hiring children, work children labor, child labor. Uh, sometimes we need authorization 
if we hire uh, people under 16. Many employers are not aware of this. We are attempting to educate the people, especially employers, as to what their uh, obligations are when they hire children that are under 16 or foreign workers or uh, all of this is under the regulations that cover workplaces. If you need to reach us, I have uh, there is so much information and sometimes uh, if you look at the uh, images, it helps you to know what to click on. So today we are going to talk about problem resolution based on certain interests on certain subjects. It's an extension of training that we give in terms of re industrial relations on negotiations based on uh, in certain interests. Maybe you've ever heard the expression interest based negotiation. It's an idea that exists uh, for a long time and we adapted it for the uh, resolving complex problems in a workplace uh, and uh, interactions between employees. When we use this uh, method step by step, it helps us better understand the problem, where it comes from, to uh, distance ourselves from a strong position, one-sided position, to focus on the problem rather than the people. And we look at long-term solutions. This can also uh, encourage confidence and rebuild relationships that have been influenced in the past or affected in the past. So we often use it in negotiations, but we realize in this day and age that it's a method that can be used to resolve problems, work-based problems. Before I get into the details of the method itself, I want to give a bit of information on the approach. Uh, the approach is based on a flexible process uh, uh, to communicate the situation, creativity, and the full participation. It's uh, used uh, for certain people. At some, it doesn't necessarily work for everyone. Once we give this seminar, we ask people, the workshop, we ask them, was this a method that you thought uh, that you want to try. It's very flexible, but it uh, requires a lot of energy, as you will see when I go into the details, and can also improve relations long term. But what it isn't is a one size fits all solution to all problems. You can't necessarily get everything you want. It doesn't mean there will not be conflict. And we mustn't necessarily accept everything just to be polite. However, if you enter in a conversation uh, with the idea that we're going to get everything or the solution to all our problems, it will not work. We will go into details, but it's a willingness to participate that makes the method uh, work sometimes or most of the times. Why use this interest-based approach to help both parties advance their interest to, to maximize the gains collectively? Even if it's two people, it, it's a gain, it's a collective gain. It uh, improves the relationships between those who are implied and a better understanding of the underlying problem. Sometimes we only understand at a certain level, but this method allows us to discuss uh, what's underneath the problems, which often reflects better what the problem really is. So how does this approach help both parties? by a complete discussion on complicated questions. What's at stake? By cr encouraging creative solutions, we encourage conversation, participation, creative ideas, uh, options. Uh, we reduce confrontation. 
we manage the discussion when in a case if it's someone in our office who facilitates this process in a group we manage the confrontation we manage the conversation and at the beginning of all discussions we have fundamental rules of what the expectations are how we are going to talk to each other how we're going to communicate how we're going to manage emails and uh, cell phones at the table everything is detailed one person doesn't say here this is what we're going to do we establish the rules together it's a participatory process at the end everyone has to accept the results because they engage to do so we find better working relationships closer the fundamental principle is we have five steps. We have to follow them. In other words, in order to get to a consensus, which is acceptable to everyone. You have to concentrate and fix on the subjects and not the personality. Sometimes we tend to go around the table and we point the finger and we say this one or that one. Sometimes, uh, our decisions are based on the people around the table, but we have to put that aside. You have to concentrate on the why, what is the main objective? We talk about the interests in place, not on the post that so I'm going to explain, but what is important for each person around the table? or the people that are affected by the problem or the changements. So we define many options that answer the needs of all parties. I say two parties because it's one side or the other, but everyone is implicated. And we discuss together the options. And uh, often when we do bra brainstorming, the approach that we have is if we say something that it's going to be struck in stone and we'll be stuck with it. Everything uh, is kept, major decisions are kept until the end so that everyone can be open and share their different ideas. So here's an example of the types of discussion we have. Uh, I give you a scene, I setting the scene. You've been invited to go to a meeting to discuss of a problem that exists for a long time that no one wants to talk about, but nobody wants to talk about it, but we need a solution and we don't know what to do and how to do it. It's a negative feeling in the work spot space and we know we have to solve it but we don't know how and even before going into the meeting room do you see uh, more on the left or do you see more on the right is your style of communication more what you see on the right myself in the past I was mostly on the left side. I saw that as a challenge. I saw it as a, uh, a having to argue my point of view that I have the, uh, I, I was always speaking and I wasn't listening. So it's arguments, demands, positions, uh, insisting. We fight for the way to, to want to speak, but often we stop people from speaking and there's a lot of confrontation. When we can't hear each other, we are uh, tired. We make a, a majority decision. Uh, the person who is the most vocal will win its point, but does it really solve the problem? It's going to come back. So we have to have the will to be conscious of oneself. We have to see what kicks us off when we are entering into a discussion of the complex problems. We have to be mentally prepared. We have to make a conscious effort, plan ahead on how we would like the conversation to happen. So think of listening. We heard earlier in other sessions how important to be a good listener, an active listener. We discussion, we don't insist. 
everyone has the chance to uh, have their say. All of this to say it's an exercise to prepare oneself mentally when we are going into a difficult conversation. So this brings me to the five steps that the what we need to be able to resolve problems. First of all, define the real problem. Uh, to explore everyone's interests. Three, have a brainstorming for multiple solutions. Four, evaluate the options, and then a decision by consensus. So. Defining the real problem before resolving a problem, we must have a good understanding, a clear understanding of what the problem is. So this is the first and most important step, and we need the time necessary to do it to, with everyone around the table. Everyone has to be part. We must make sure that everyone understands and everyone is on the same page as to what exactly the problem is, what we suggest. When you want to identify the problem, you ask the question, what is a subject? What is being discussed? And ask it as a question. How can we or how could we address the work schedule so that it's equitable? You start with that. This way, by doing it, you can't say yes or no as an answer. It doesn't offer a solution because we don't have the solution. Even if mentally we are there to have good discussions, we are there to discuss options. And so there are no expectations. How can we talk about the work schedule so that Lee's uh, stops bugging me? No, that's not how we do it. We don't have any accusatory tone in our question. How can we, how should we? And also encourages people's engagement, participation, people, it makes people think about what they're about to do. Once you have explained what the problem is. You can even write it on the blackboard. When everyone's ready, then you can explore uh, people's interests in the problem. Again, uh, we talk about the needs of the preoccupations, the worries that people have concerning the problem. It's not easy because people are not used to sharing uh, their feelings, their preoccupations, their concerns. It's it's not a method uh, that we often use. We are always looking at solutions, but oftentimes we forget to look at what the problem is. What is the actual problem? Why am I here? Why do I want to be part of the conversation? So we encourage to share this. And by doing it, sometimes we realize that we have many concerns in common, and but we've never taken the time to talk to each other. So it helps discuss options. Uh, and it's encouraging to say, oh, I'm not the only person who feels this way, or I'm not the only person who worries about this, but we are not offering a solution yet. We have to be very careful because we're often in a solution mode. Everything goes fast and we must really take the time to say, no, we are now talking about what the problem is. So to uh, identify interests rather than positions, it's a chance to see is this a position that I have or an interest that I have? And a reason to ask, a way to ask yourself this question, is it a solution that I have in terms of the subject or the problem? Or is it a worry that I have about the subject or problem? A Again, a position gives solution. Interest does not give a solution. It tells us what is worried me, what bothers me, what my perceptions are. When we talk about interests, I talk about uh, not me, I talk about us. When we talk about position, it's you, me, I want, I want, you want. But when we say je, I, we're talking about ourselves. 
So once the interests have been identified and you can do it on a board, you see what you have in common amongst those around the table, and then you're ready to do, to, to find options, multiple options. And this can be very please, uh, good. The problem takes a lot of negativity. It can be a challenge for people. The second step asked a lot of us because we are asking, uh, we we're asked to be, to open up, to identify our fears. The third option is, uh, can be uh, useful because we see that we have moved towards a solution or an option. Uh, there's like a light at the end of the tunnel. So it can be a way to really engage freely. It can be helpful and uh, stress-free. It's a chance to be creative, to communicate our ideas. It's less formal, it's very open. And it's where you see that people engage in the process. People who tend to be quiet will communicate. If not, you ask them, you go look for, for them because we want everyone to participate. So there are rules when you're doing a brainstorming. When we do the workshop, when we're at this stage, we post the rules to make sure that everyone is aware because sometimes we forget ourselves, it's normal. So everyone participates. There are introverts and extroverts in a group. We must make sure that everyone participates, that everyone has a chance to say something. We create, we don't evaluate. We're still creating, we're, we're creating, we're not criticizing. It's not easy. How many times have you thrown an idea out and people say, oh, we've already done that. It didn't work, but maybe it would work. Or maybe it's an option. It's not a solution. It's an option that we are discussing, the possibility that it would help resolve the problem. Maybe it didn't work at a certain time, but with new information, it could work. We evolve, we change. It's an option that we can consider. We take nothing off the list. Nothing is taken off the list. We identify all possible options. So we do it on a board so that it's visual and people are encouraged. We talk about quantity, not quality. Right now, there are ideas uh, out of the box as much as possible. Oftentimes, uh, the craziest idea is the one that works best, uh, but no idea is a bad idea at this point. Uh, these are ideas that we can develop, that we can evolve, uh, and we can maybe merge with another idea to arrive at a solution. And we ask people to police themselves. Uh, if you see people that don't participate, that don't say anything, uh, talk to them. We're not, we haven't yet arrived at a solution. We're still looking at it for a solution. Once you've identified all the options, you can imagine in your brainstorming, we can say, we have a good list. We have many choices. Now we have to evaluate them. That can take two minutes, hours, days, depending on how complex the problem is. Another question that you must ask, do you need more information before you can make a decision? Are there policies? Are, is there a law? Is there something else that we must consider con concerning where we're going towards a solution? If you have looked at the problem, you have your interests, so you have your options, you have, uh, and you are now ready to make an evaluation. These are the three questions that we have you must ask the three questions. Uh, does the option satisfy everyone's interest, everyone's concern, uh, the interest of the group, everyone who's Im uh, implicated? This is an option. Do we have the resources necessary to move ahead, whether it be financial resources, human resources, or other? If yes, uh, it's valid. Third question. Can we sell the idea to others? In a union 
space, it must be voted on. Some people have to vote. If there is non non union list, if there is just a conversation you have about the strategic problem, you can ask the questions. Can I sell it to my um, director, minister? Is it comfort? Is, does it fit it within the mandate? If we can answer to these three questions, then it's it's valuable. And then we are still on the same page. Everybody is ready to go on for the next step. Then we are at number five, decision making by consensus, no vote, not by majority. It's just a decision by consensus. All members of the group agree on one alternative, not, still not a solution, an alternative. So I've been part of the processes since step one. I understand everything, the issue, why we are here and the goal. I have had the, everybody's interests that are very important because if we don't respond to the interests, there will always be a problem. It's going to come back. Third, everybody had had a chance to participate, communicate, be creative. And step four, we saw together, we saw what functions really and what does not. So we have been able to remove some options from the list because they were not valuable, they didn't work. It was a good idea, but as a group for everybody, it didn't work. So now we have um, these options on the list and are left. We have to find only one. So uh, the same conversation as like step four, what is left on the list? Let's say there are two alternatives. Can they com be combined? Can we? This, what is going to work? It's always group discussion. There is no caucus meeting. There is no group on the side or in the bathroom or in the dining room. We discuss together. We go forward together. So the consensus, it's like when everybody, each member, and say can say I understand what's proposed. I've been able to express my opinions, understand the opinions and the interests of others. The decision was taken overtly with equality. That's the best solution for us right now with the information we have now with our resources for the for the individuals participating. That's the best solution we could find right now. And the most important point, the last one. That's um, I, whether I like this decision or not, I can support it. It's not my solution. It's not my idea that I had at the beginning of the session, but through the process, I understand better and I can support the decision that we are going to take as a group. Some uh, guidelines also. One has to participate and to encourage participation during the, the decision process making the consensus. Make sure that everybody has a chance to speak if there are some concerns, some things that don't work well. You, you will be able to read in the group, uh, listen and be open to ideas, sharing the information. Um, we yield to reason, not to pressure. That's important for one is one problem. Let's say you have a list. It's for sure patients. It can be uh, very minimal at the end of the day. So it's important not to put under pressure. We need good reasoning, no negotiation at that point, no intimidation, no coercing, no coercion, and but don't give up your principles, your interests. Treat differences as an asset. So, for example, we have a, a personal experience. We had a group. We did all the whole process, all the steps, one to five. We are at the end. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Everything's fine. And then we realize somebody at the, um, at the, you know, way back in the room crossed harms and could not be able to be there in opinion. 
we have to go back. Maybe it's discouraging for the others who are ready, but for one reason or another, it doesn't work for that person. If we want to have a long-term solution where everybody is going to be engaged, we have to make sure to have that before going further. We have to talk, go back to interest. What are the concerns? And often it may not be much, but don't avoid that step. The commitment. I mentioned earlier, nothing is cast in stone from the beginning. So often we refrain from talking and sharing our ideas because we thought it's going to be cast in stone from the beginning. No, not here. We always keep the commitment for for the end. So then we can allow, we can and explore all the possibilities. And it, and it promotes communication, open communication. So to close, you can reflect on that process. We discussed all the topics. Everything was discussed. We met our objective to find an agreement, find a solution. No can be part of the process. If at the end you realize that we really cannot no is a solution and it's okay it's a method for problem solving but on the other end we are grouping of issues we have subject or a goal we want to reach and to close it comes at the decision making by consensus so as a recap the five steps like I said, you do each step one to five for each issue you have that you want to address for ne negotiations. Often there is a list of items to discuss, but as a group for an intervention in workplace, we identify the problem on the work environment that cause the issue and we do the five steps for each point that is has been identified. So the key to success before starting on that method, I encourage the training on one day to give an overview that is clear and definite about the process and make sure it's a processes you want to get into. You have to be willing, you have to be open so that for it to work. If you are open, if there is, a, people are willing to change, then there is commitment at all levels. You still have your long-term vision. You have a reflection on local approach, better understanding, not only of the problem, but the group, the, of the business, of the mandate, and so on. There is a willing, a real willingness to change. That's very important so that that method could be um, successful. The advantages, once again, I know I'm repeating, but I really put the emphasis on um, the better communication. It's not easy when there you enter a work environment and there are conflicts and like for years it has been there and sometimes it becomes a culture and should not be. This is a method that could encourage that. It gives opportunity, flexibility to be open, to, to feel at ease, to be open. People understand better each other because you have a perspective and then you avoid to have somebody winning, somebody losing. When you end up, when you finish the discussion, when at the end of the discussion, you have, there is a plan in place. Everybody feels like they're winning. It gives the opportunity to resolve various problems, resilience, better resilience, goodwill, like the confidence. Yes, we can resolve, we can solve that problem. It's not like a mountain. Often we are overwhelmed. We feel too like it's too big. 
and we want to solve, we want to find a solution right away without really understanding why the consideration, the interests of the people. We want the solution, we want things to move forward, we want the next thing. Sometimes it's, um, it's um, of great value to do that uh, solving problem based on the interest to, f I mean, to find a solution for long term that can benefit the groups, especially for um, working relations going forward. And now I reach the questions. Okay. Thank you, Liz. We appreciate that. You explained very well the approach for an um, interest-based resolution. So the participants are invited to ask questions, to please, to use the uh, icon Q&A. Please feel be welcome to ask questions in whichever language you prefer. And I think Liz will be ready to answer. Once again, another question about the PowerPoint. There is some uh, asking about sharing the PowerPoint. Are you ready to do that, Liz? Yes, yes, for sure. I also wanted to mention that um, the team that is organizing that, that it's going to be Everything is recorded, the presentations today, and in the following weeks, maybe months, because there is some work to do before it, be, it will be available on the website. It will be on the website for Memorial McQueen Ferguson Center for um, Research on Family Violence. That would be a place where you could find them too. But Liz, if you are ready to share it, with us, it could be shared with the participants also. For sure, certainly. It would be a classroom services that would be a good contact point on the list. Can I send it to you, the um, final version? Yes, that's perfect. Thank you. And once again, I apologize. I hope I did not speak that fast for the interpreters. I didn't see any other commentary, so I think it was okay. So big thank you. So for sure, are there some questions? Otherwise, I can start with questions. Um, Liz, could, could you please explain who has accept um, a little bit more? for uh, industrial relations. Once again, it's the unionized sector mostly. According to um, Industrial Relations Act, but on the on other hand, our workshops of facilitation, consultation services, mediation are offered to all employees and employers free under employment for uh, it's the non-unionized sector for employment, it's employees, employers. Most employers have policies, internal policies for human resources, but often these policies do not answer for everything. So we encourage employers to keep up to date about their rights and responsibilities uh, according to the Employment Standards Act. So we have information sessions across the province for everybody. And once again, both languages and for free. Okay. Oh, sorry, go ahead. There is, if you had something to add, but there is a question that just came in. So members could feel that the decisions of the group would be changed by the supervisor or polit politic represent. How can you make them feel better to encourage them to participate to discussions? For sure, we are always and reporting to a supervisor or 
I are clear. At the beginning, before even starting the meeting, the discussion step one, you have to have the right people around the table. We encourage strongly those who decision-making people, or those who speak on behalf of others and other groups that they would be sitting at the table. If they cannot be sitting at the table, once again, the person who is going to be sharing the um, information, who is going to report information afterwards, must have some power to be able to make decisions for the person who cannot be there. You have to make sure that the people who are present are be able, will be able to share, make decisions, and represent the interests of others around the table. Does that answer your question? Another question. It will be. <laughs> Uh, I've been making last minute changes, even at, like at 1045. Uh, so yes, I, it will be made available in English for, for, for sure. Merci, Lise. Thank you, Lise. Are there other questions about the process? Um, or processes about interest-based making of experience? Caroline says, thank you. Merci. Thank you for the presentation in English also. If I can just add, don't hesitate to go to our web page, especially the one about employment standards. We have information handouts. It's easy to find the information that you are looking for. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to call. OK, one second. I have a contact list. OK, sorry. I have a slide at the end that I cannot access at the end with all our contact information, the website, the info lines, French and English, the regional offices, and so on. Don't hesitate to communicate with us for any question. Even if it's an intervention uh, on the workplace, if you have a question regarding that, our advice is free. And we can certainly, if we don't have the answer, we can uh, uh, refer you to other organizations who could help you. And maybe a good thing to share to close, because it's uh, the last comment. It says, the best way to solve the problem, we hear it since this morning, is to listen. So that's very, since Nicole's presentation, and also when Amber was with us, and Yulis, the fact that we can actively listen with empathy. So I think we are going to end the morning and invite uh, people to take a break. And just to let you know, we are going to go on. Oh, there is another question. Uh, there is another question, Liz, last one. What, what is the recourse if we work from home, self-employed, links or organizations that um, you have for us? OK, so about uh, employment standards and rights, I will ask you to communicate with uh, one of the agents of um, employment standards and ask your questions. Once again, I cannot access the last slide. And I'm sorry, technically, I'm not very good. If it's in French, we have toll free numbers. If I may, I can give the number. I'm sorry. I don't understand why I cannot. Oh, here, can you see? Contact us. The information, the next slide, the contact information is there. Thank you. So agents have specific questions they have. They can ask you to identify exactly what are your rights, if you're self-employed, working from home. It's not only, it's just blank entry point. It's just specific questions to understand your situation, to give you the your information. So toll free line, email, offices, everything is identified there on the right side. 
Thank you, Liz. And we really uh, appreciate tremendously your contribution this morning, the time, and have a good, uh, nice afternoon. I hope everybody can join us at one. And the presentation will be about Secret Babender and um, Equality des Femmes. You, you will have an option to give a feedback at the end of our sessions this afternoon and also by email with a Zoom link. So we appreciate very much the feedback from participants. See you later and have a good afternoon.